Howdy folks, this video is going to be all about the FRSky uh, receivers, the X-series receivers and the smart port uh, sensors. I've got the LiPo voltage sensor, the current sensor, the GPS and the Vario, which I'll show you how to connect up and set up in the radio. Now these uh, S-port enabled sensors are designed to co connect directly to the X-series receivers which are S-port enabled as well and you can connect more than one sensor to a receiver uh, and the way that you do that is uh, we've got two connections, two S-port connections on each receiver and you can just daisy chain one to the other to the other. I'll show you how to do that. First up I'll show you how to bind a new receiver to a new model. I have a brand new X8R receiver here, which I'll open up. Now you'll see we have a, a bind button here, which you need to push down when you're in bind mode. So we'll just get the uh, transmitter into bind mode, menu, page, hit the minus button to go down to bind. It's in bind mode hear the beepy sounds. Now you need to apply, uh, turn that down a bit, 5 volts to the receiver. Uh, actually they'll take 4 to 10 volts, these receivers, while you're pushing down that button. I have a little 5 volt battery here that I use for binding. Touch the 5 volts to any input, as long as the polarity is correct. And we get the green light and the flashing red light there. Get out of bind mode. Let's see if that's worked. So we've got the green light there and that shows that it's bound. These receivers are very sensitive and the transmitter is quite powerful so you may need to move the uh, receiver at least a foot or 30 centimeters away from the re uh, transmitter to get it to bind otherwise it sort of swamps it with strong signal. There's just a tip but anyway if you've got that green light there you're ready to roll. And here's an X4R receiver, and you, see, you can see we've got a button on that one to push as well, exactly the same. Apply 5 volts while you're in bind mode, and watch the LEDs, and you're good to go. We're going to need a live plane for this section. Uh, we're going to connect up the sensors. We'll start off with the LiPo sensor. So here's the LiPo sensor, and we get the sensor, and we get a, a male-to-male telemetry connection lead. This one is a really nice little... OLED screen as well. And we can just plug that into the balance lead and it acts like a really nice little battery checker as well. Okay so the smart port as opposed to the S bus, <laughs> a little bit confusing. We plug this lead into the smart port on the sensor and into the smart port on the receiver which is on the other end near the antennas. Let's plug that in there and we get a flashing red light there to show that the sensor is connected. Now we just have to tell the radio about the sensor. So we hit menu, page and now you can skip forward through the pages by just touching the page button or you can skip backwards by a long press of the page button. So we get to the telemetry screen, discover new sensors, hit enter. So you can see it's discovered the LiPo voltage sensor. It's uh, recognized its ID value, uh, ID number as two. Each sensor has its own individual ID number. Reading at 12.42 volts, that's all very good. We've also picked up the RSSI and the receiver battery values uh, from the receiver itself. That's sort of like an inbuilt telemetry with, the, with these X-series receivers. Now on this telemetry screen, we can also set up the telemetry page. Uh, initially it'll be set at, at none like that, but if you change that to numbers, then you get a chance to uh, populate the telemetry screen with whatever you want. So let's have a look. We'll go right up to... So cells there, we can put the pack voltage. And I might put the RSSI on there as well. So let's just have a look at how that looks. So we'll back out. Now to pull up the telemetry display screen, you push and hold the page button and then we get the pack voltage and the RSSI on the screen there. All right, so let's continue on and connect a GPS as well. All right, so now I'm gonna connect the GPS sensor 
daisy chaining off the LiPo sensor. All we need to do is get another one of these male to male cables connected up and plug it into the spare uh, connection, spare S port connection on the LiPo sensor. We get the flashing light here, fast flashing light. When this turns to a slow flashing light, same as that one, you've uh, acquired GPS coordinates. It actually has to face up that way. So let's go and set that up in the radio now. And we just go down and discover new sensors. There we go, we've got the GPS and the date. Look at that. Now there's a dotted line there because we haven't actually acquired any satellites yet, but you can see you can get the GPS speed, the GPS altitude. You can also get the distance as well somehow. Let's have a look at that. Add a new sensor, type calculated, and then we search for distance, distance, there we are. And we are using the GPS sensor. When you create a new sensor out of uh, an existing sensor, you need to give it a name, of course. And um, we'll call it distance. And there we have it there now. Now I can find it in the screen menu. Now it'll be available to choose in this menu here. Probably right up the top, I'd say. There it is. So now we have distance in metres. Uh, the date will show up when we get some, some satellites, the speed and the altitude. Now we'll add the Vario to the daisy chain. These, uh, I think these are analog inputs. We don't need them at all with the X-series. Just need another one of these male to male connectors. Correct polarity. Daisy chain it off the GPS. So there we've got the slow flashing light again, so we're all good. So let's, let's go and set it up. Discover new sensors. And there we've got vertical speed appearing from the Vario. So let's go and... Now if we scroll down, we actually get Vario set up source. You've got to tell it that we're going to use the vertical speed for the Vario sounds. There we go. The range is minus 10 metres a second to plus 10 metres a second. I think that's what it means. The centre portion is 0.5 to plus 0.5. You can have that as a tone or silent. I like that as silent because you don't want the tone going all the time. Uh, and there we go, so that is now set up. But what we need to do is go and set up a switch which will activate that. We'll go back to special functions, select a switch, uh, say the SD switch in the middle position, find the Vario, there's the Vario. So now when the SD switch is in the middle position, we should get the Vario sounds. There we go. There we go, I'm lifting the model up quickly and it's giving me the Vario sound. And there's the sync sound as well. And now I'll connect up the current sensor. Same deal, we just plug it into the uh, S port cable. Going to the receiver, I've removed all the other sensors, it's getting a bit busy there. And now we can put this in line between the ESC and the battery. All right, let's go and discover the current sensor. So we scroll down to discover new sensors and there we have the current and the VFAS, which is the voltage. So it sort of can sense the current and the voltage. And from those numbers, it can also work out the uh, milliamp hours as well. So. Let's uh, stop discovery. Now what we do here is add a new sensor. Call it a name, like MAH in capitals. Type is calculated. So you change that from custom to calculated. The formula, just search through for consumption. There we go. And the sensor, we use the current sensor. That MAH sensor that we've created will now be uh, discoverable. Basically there it is there. I'll rev the motor up a little bit. Oh. And we'll see this value climb. There we go. And we'll see a current reading as well, 1.9 amps. Very useful sensor that one. Now probably the most uh, 
useful part of this radio is to get voice prompts of all these values that we've just created using the sensors. So we go to menu and we page to the special, special functions screen. Select the switch, the SG switch in the middle position. Play value. And we'll choose the uh, pack voltage. There we go. And we'll have it do it every, say, 20 seconds. That's a good number. Now with the ST switch in the down position, or forward position, I'll play, get it to play the current. Current every 10 seconds is a bit more useful for current. And with the SG switch in the back position, we'll get it to play the milliamp hours. So that's why you have to give the created sensor a name so, so that the radio can search for that name. Uh, milliamp hours will... It's giving us miles per hour for some reason. I'll have to go back and change that. Uh, every 20 seconds will do. Now you may have noticed that some of these readouts are saying the wrong units. Uh, the value is correct but the units are wrong. That was saying miles per hour rather than milliamp hours and that's because of the uh, sound pack that's loaded on, that's preloaded onto this radio. It seems to be a bit out of date or a bit wrong or something like that. In the next video I'll show you how to update the firmware and get the correct sound pack. Very good, thanks for watching.